In life, we have to endure our own versions of storms. They come in different forms, some heavier than others. At times, they feel like they'll last forever. We didn't expect the weather conditions in Dai to be storming the whole time we were there. The skies were gray, and the rain just poured down on us without end. But in spite of these conditions, there was something about Dai that took us on a journey. It cared for us like a friend that needed shelter from the rain. It fed us well, taught us new things, and most importantly, gave us deep friendships that will last a lifetime. Community in Dai Tai, very, um, they're friendly. It's a very safe place to stay in and raise a family. Maliit lang kasi siyang town, so magkakakilala talaga yung mga tao. Kung baga, give all, parang mapa-feel welcome kayo. Buhay dito sa Daet is napaka-simple lang. Uwi ka ng bahay, papasok ako dito sa bagas-bas. Then yun lang, daily routine. Parang napaka-light lang. Hindi tulad sa syudad, di ba? Dito, simple lang. Kasama mo mga kaibigan mo, pamilya. Daet is the capital of Camarines Norte. It's a renowned surf and kiteboarding spot that attracts people from all around the world. The impact of kiteboarding and surfing here in Bagasbas, ito yung nagdadala ng tourists. Nag-invite sa mga Manilenos, sa mga ibang parts of the Philippines, including international surfers. Yung naging way namin para makilala. Beach namin is for beginners. Kung maganda talaga yung panahon, it would be for ano, intermediate din, saka mga professionals din. Maganda siyang uh, sports sa katawan. Siya yung kakaiba. Kasi lahat gumagana. Tuhod, paa, utak, kamay, so lahat. They say it's all about the journey and not the destination. That sums up our little road trip to this secret spot. I was so pumped to get there and discover this new gem. It was pouring rain, but this didn't stop us. That was until we got to a long winding road that was under repair. Instead of 30 minutes, we were driving for more than an hour. O, sana pupunta tayo sa surfing spot, pero sa oras ngayon at sa daan ngayon, mukhang buho malabibab sa tayo makarating doon. The sun was starting to set, and I knew we just had to call it a day and turn back. You know, I, of course I wanted to surf. I've been here for a few days already, and no surf, it's hard. It's like no, no alcohol. You know, we prepared. We all prepared. I brought my bike with me. I put a bike rack, put extra lights in my car. Man, it's not working. <laughs> there are things that you don't really want to do, and you still got to roll with the punches, and we still got to get the job done. Living in the city tends to put us in a constantly frantic pace. We're moving from one activity to another, trying to be as productive as we can be. John is a regular meditation practitioner, and I got the chance to learn a few meditation exercises with him. I got into these lifestyles a few, almost eight, nine years ago. Sa isang friend, give me some booklets, then I was really interested. Sa searching talaga, I was searching. Ano ba yung purpose na, ano ba yung goal of life? Doon sa binigay niya sa akin, na, na satisfy ako naman sa mga, mga questions sa buhay. Kahit ka nandito, ano ba yung purpose mo? Meron silang classes, so I attend the classes. Yung process, ina-apply ko sa buhay, then malayo talaga yung difference. Common naman goal is to be happy. We all want to be happy. Gusto ko maging relaxed, yung walang anxieties. It's back to yoga process na purify yung isip mo, then you see things clearly. Sa Manila kasi I was really burned out na talaga. Paulit-ulit lang, gigising ka, kakain ka, magtrabaho ka. Hindi mo siya mahanap yung happiness na hinahanap mo doon. Puro escape lang. Hindi gusto ko dito, of course, yung kagat relax lang talaga. Kasi ingay, wala, ayoko na talaga niya. Ingay, simple yung buhay. Hindi siya possible sa Manila. Before pa, gigising ka, kakain ka, masurf ka. Yun, tapos gawa ka ng mga gawin-gawin mo. Sometimes, all we need is to quiet our minds and listen to our breath.
I prepared countless budo fights in the city and by the beach, but this one was a standout. Since we were being hosted by Aya, who's vegetarian, she made us try a Filipino vegetarian budo fight. Okay, Doc, salamat sa pag-imbita. Una sa lahat, ano ang kakainin natin ngayon? Marami na akong budol fight na nagawa at na experience, pero hindi pa ako naka-experience ng ganito. Ngayon gabi po, nag-prepare po kami ng sinantol na vegetarian. Galing sa santol na fruit na ginawa siyang parang gulay, coconut milk, tapos with other additional secret flavors. Because it's vegetarian, so may mga inad pa yung kasama namin na ito. Hindi ba laing yan? Hindi siya laing. <laughs> Pero ano yung coconut meat? Coconut milk po. Meat, wala? Walang meat. Saan yung galing yung... Ano yun? <laughs> yun. Tanungin mo si ate. Ito po, vegetarian meat. It's made of seaweeds. Ah. Na tinawang texture ng meat siya. Okay. And niluto siya as if real barbecue wow. with a real marinade. Ah. Ito naman si lumpia. Uh, vegetarian lumpia. Lahat lang vegetables, wala din pong meat, walang egg, walang halong pong Walang fish. May kamote? May kamote, may toge. Ano yung kain na tayo sa Bicolano? Kakana kita. Kakana kita. Kakana kita. Tara. I was pleasantly surprised that all the dishes didn't even taste like they were made out of vegetables. It was such a treat to try Bicolano food and lessen our carbon footprints by not eating meat at the same time. During the vegetarian boodle fight, we were served this really interesting dish called sinantol, which is made out of the santol fruit. It was the first time for me to taste it, and I was so curious to find out how it was prepared. I got the chance to cook alongside the longtime cook of Eya at her kitchen and learn how to make it. Ito yung pinaka... Uh, I look forward to the trip. I was ko to the other day. I was looking for 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 the Kailangan makulo ang mga buti yung sinantol para maluto. Kasi na ano yan eh, yung dumadami. Ah, kasi ina-absorb mo siguro. No? Spongy kasi siguro. Yung ating stir-fry na oh, sauce. Oo, oh, oh, tama. Pwede na rin isabay ito dito. Balikan natin yan. Mga five minutes yan. Ayan, malapit na siya. Pinatutuyo yan sa gata. Kaya may katagalan din lutuin. Kalawang gata. Mm. Lagay na natin itong sili para mag-anghang yan. Sige. Wow, ang maliit pang sili. Ayun, oh, parang naghihiwalay na ng konti yung mantika niya, no? Oo. Uh, 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 may... <laughs> Meron din. Vitamin C. Oh, vitamin C? Yes. Fiber. Yes, fiber. Good. Hinahalo ko para hindi siya dumikit. Yeah, malapot na siya, oh. May katagalan lang talaga magluto niyan. Kailangan tingis. Sige, lagay na natin ang asin. Hindi lang yung basta-basta asin. Tink pa siya. Himalayan salt ang ano dyan, tawag. Kakagaling siya ng iba-ibang sakit. At pagtuyo na ito, luto na siya. Food was actually surprisingly good, healthy, guilt-free. It's my first time to ever eat savory santol or santol with gata. It's cool, you know, it's interesting. See, Ate Ana, she's been doing vegetarian dishes for the past three years, and I think she does it like on a weekly basis, and you can tell that she's mastered every step, and she's very particular. They're genuinely nice people, which is rare. What do you do when it's storming outside and you just feel like staying in? It's simple. Just stay in and make comfort food. So Chef June was kind enough to lend us his kitchen. Chef June is the owner of this Pugpaan Cafe. I've been having uh, hot chocolate here for the past three days and oh, come in. I 
decided to make a comforting bowl of arroz caldo by taking inspiration from the way the Japanese do their ramen. Aside from this, I made a brunch spread serving a dried fish platter with three kinds of vinegar, French toast pandesal with salted egg peanut butter topped with crispy bacon, toasted coconut, and glazed sugar cane syrup. Okay, so what we're doing today is sort of like a brunch meal. Collaborate ako with Chef June. So dahil malamig, gumawa kami ng seafood arroz caldo na coconut meat sinunog namin sa uling. So medyo smoky arroz caldo siya na maanghang-anghang. Pandesal, French toast na tinimplahan namin ng salted egg at peanut butter. Tapos grated coconut, crispy bacon on top. Ito yung ginawa ni Chef June. It's the coconut jam that's the sugar cane. It's good with the bread. There's two kinds of French toast. Yung isa malunggay pandesal, and this is your Panamericano or toast. Ito na yung ating arroz caldo. Pag kumain tayo, listen carefully. Get the bowl, get some arroz caldo, get one piece of egg, tapos konting chicharon. Chili garlic and shrimp. Lagyan mo konting seaweeds. Ito ay ginger garlic. Pa konti konti lang, wag niyong punuin yung inyong bowl. Pag busog na kayo, kainin niyo yung dried fish. Meron tayong tatlo klasing vinegar. Meron tayong sweet chili vinegar, meron tayong pineapple vinegar, meron tayong coffee vinegar. So pili lang kayo kung anong kombinasyon yung gusto niyo. Wag niyong ihalo-halo ah. Okay, enjoy. So yeah, we said 10 o'clock, we served around 10.45, so, you know, they were waiting, they were hungry. But the best part is when you slowly come out with the dishes and then you start to arrange it and everyone just gets really, really quiet. It builds up and they are excited, they are curious, and then they get really overwhelmed. Once you've finished assembling everything on shoots like this, and being in like uncontrolled environments is very rejuvenating for me as a chef. Because in Manila, you know, all I do there is command. And here, from the market to the presentation, every step you see, it's like flexing your muscles or it's like going to the gym, you know? It reminds me of my cooking days when I was, you know, doing the, the 10, 12 hour grind, Monday to Sunday. And sometimes no days off. In my mind, I tell myself, oh, okay, I still kind of got it. You know, I still, I, I still got the moves. It's like riding a bicycle, I guess, from how you make something from nothing and become something. I guess it's an art. One of the most fascinating things about this trip is meeting a local artisan that specializes in making a mouth-watering dessert called pandesilios. Made out of peely nuts and yema, they're meticulously crafted with a lot of love and attention. It's no surprise it's a local favorite. Hello, Ate Imay. Hello, po, Chef. Kamusta? Mabuti po. Salamat sa pag-imbita dito sa bahay mo. <laughs> Welcome po kayo dito sa Magasbas. Thank you. Yung pandesilios ba? originated dito sa inyo, sa lugar nyo? Ay, opo. Yung Panisilios ay nagsimula yan talaga. Asawa ng first governor ng Camarines Norte na si Doña Rosario Balselokban. Tapos, tinuro niya yan doon sa kanyang daughter-in-law na si Manuela Neri Lokban. Ako'y tumira sa kanila at pinag-aral nila ako ng college. Habang ako'y nakatira sa kanila, natuto akong gumawa niyang Panisilios. So, okay. Ano tong ginagawa? Ito po ay doon ng Panisilios. Panisilios. Pastry po yun. Okay. Yung pong panisilios, merong palaman na pili, mm -hmm. tapos merong cheese, mm -hmm. may butter. Merong roll yun. Mm -hmm. Yan po ay ano ino-open. Mga one hour. So marami na bang sumunod sa inyo na gumagawa marami rin ito? Marami po nito locally dyan sa Vincent's ang gumagawa. Pero 
iba naman po ang pansin na sinabi. Ito na yung dog. Papalaman natin ito. Mm. Pili. Pili. Pure pili. Ang piling nito ay sugar, ground pili, at Gatas. saka milk. Dinudurog, pina, tapos in, yung... Eh, pinag-processor ko ang pili. Okay. Sinasama na dun sa gatas at asukan. Tapos niluluto yan hanggang lumapot? Hang, hanggang lumapot. Hanggang ganito na po ang texture. Mm -hmm. Tapos okay. i-spread yan dito. Okay. Kailangan pala yung pulso mo, medyo sakto, ano? At saka yung mong ano yung masyadong magnipis, yung dough niya. Kasi okay. pag nagpalamang ka, pag kinap mo yan, makikita yung... Ano, Ito yung mga techniques na hindi mo makukuha overnight. Oh. Kailangan araw-araw mo yung, talaga ano gawin nga, mo. May mga membro nga kami ng pamilya na talagang give up sila, hindi nila makuha. Hindi rin siya madali gawin, ano? Ay, hindi po. Tapos... Mahirap po kasi ito, tsaka matagal gawin. Hmm, kahit ma mahirap, ginagawa mo pa rin. Oo, kasi gusto kong makakain ng masarap yung mga Pilipino at oh. saka yung mga dayuhan. Matikman hmm. yung produkto namin dito sa daan. Hmm. Oo nga, napansin ko medyo pag gumagawa kayo, meron talaga yung tinatawag na passion. Oo, kasi sa pagluluto, pag wala kang passion, <laughs> hindi madali. Hindi masarap. Diba, chef? <laughs> yung nga sabi ni Bernie sa akin, pag walang love, hindi wala, masarap. Wala, hindi. Yun yung mga nagugustuhan ko pag ginagawa namin yung mga shoot na to. Kasi you meet people na full of passion, nandyan yung love. Sa Maynila kasi minsan yung pagluluto ay trabaho na lang. Oo. Parang robot na lang. Tapos mararamdaman mo sa pagkain. Tatlong ingredient lang pero Oo. isarap. Pwede ko tikman. Ay sige po, habang, kain kayo. Habang mainit pa. <laughs> mm, it's very good. Bidang bida yung pili. No? Opo. Nandyan talaga yung texture and yung lasa ng pili. Na cheese to? Pagkalagay ko po nitong filling, nalagyan ko ng cheese. Mm -hmm. Pero wow. hindi ko dinadamihan ng cheese para Swabi hindi mawala yung pili. pili. In cooking, it's really about balance of flavors and textures. If you're making a pili dish, pili pa rin yung bida. Lasa. Yung lasa, tama. Mahirap siyang gawin sa totoo lang pagka hindi kasanay. Kaya lang, talagang ako yung pinupuntan nila kaya lab na lab kong gumawa ng panisig. You see, kasi ako lang yung nakakasatisfy dun sa mga customer pag natitikman nila, nasasatisfy ko sila. So, masaya ako. Kaya, naroon yung passion ko sa paggawa ng panisig niya sa iba pang produkto. Meeting Imai earlier was very inspiring, actually. It's sort of like a reminder on how to be a master of something. You know, the lady does the same thing for two decades, and she's mastered it. It's an art form na. The skill level is so high. She can do it with her eyes shut. She can do it when she's sick. You'll still get the same results. And I was telling my chef, Jojo, earlier, I go, this is the reason why I'm bringing you guys to these trips, to remind you on how to become a cook again. Sometimes it's a routine already, and we forget the very essence of cooking, which is, you know, you gotta care. How pure cooking can still be. Like earlier, she, well, she had no issues. It was just, it was very pure, very sincere. She was very proud. And then she said so, that we have a really good product here. I'm so thankful that you guys are here, because finally I can share it to everyone. I go, see, look how proud she is. You guys should be like that. Proud because you believe in what you make. Pinaghirapan mo. And yung resulta, maganda. Yun. You know, wala nga ang surf. Hindi nga akong stoke. Pero the things that you learn from the people you meet along the way. I mean, rain or shine, she's still happy. Why can't we be? The word diet is actually an ancient term from the Spanish era that translates to, to make a friend. It showed us the true meaning of getting close to each other. And for that, I am grateful.